Look what I have to review, who look what I will watch with you, who look at what we've got to do, who giant turtle play set, oh yeah. It's got features coming out the wazoo. Over 20 awesome features and they're cool. I am doing a turtle set, I am making a new play set, I can't get enough of play sets. Having more fun than this kid, dead eyes. 43 inches tall. Man, this looks good. Ugh, so cane. Couldn't be caner. Let's have a look. Oh, there's a lot, a lot of bitties in here. Got this bitty, this bitty, this bitty, this bitty, this bitty, this bitty, this bitty. This bitty. <laughs> and to top it all off, a million pieces of single use soft plastics. Yeah. When there's so much of it that's just loose in the box anyway, not in soft plastic, why does any of it have to be? What, like, what made this piece fine to just sit in the box, but this piece needed to be in soft plastics? I guess you can recycle these soft plastics, but it would surely be better if they just didn't make them in the first mother flipping place. Uh, Alright, let's get all this out of the box, and then I'll get into the instructions, and I'm, I'm not going to make you watch me build this. I'm not going to do it. It's superfluous. You don't need that. I'll do it, and we'll be back when it's all done's build. Here it is, complete with bells and or whistles. It's it's enormous. It's freaking awesome. Just the wall of color it makes. So I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to take you through it by all of its features. Exciting action features. All right, let's take it from the top with the help of April O'Neil. So this is a weird, interesting feature. This panel here. Sorry, April. This panel here slides, and it's what actually gives you access to the manhole cover to get down into the sewers. So April, you take a perch over there. You actually have to lift this one up. Oh my goodness. The first action-y action feature. Um, the reason this comes away is because if you get the turtle van thing, that pod top bit, dibbity, podity top bit, can sit there. But anyway, April, let's get this going. That's a bit of a rough landing. But that brings us down to the first security level. If I can get in there. Yeah. Of the lair itself. Room numero uno. This brings us to our first of our defensive features of this mighty playset. Here, somehow having made it down to the first level of the sewer, we've got this origami soldier who I still think they look a little bit like if the Urukai had have been a gang in the Warriors. But anyway, April comes on down, sees this bro lurking, hits this. Yeah, he's gone. He's he's sipping sipping hot ooze. 
Keep out, no access. Not for Mikey. All right, so this is a skateboard holder, according to the instructions. I guess you could put weapons there too. So I thought it made sense for Mikey to come up here for this bit. You could also get into this room from around the side. To reveal another slide. So then, had he landed there, another awesome automated feature, if we twist this, all the way. What playset's complete without at least one trap door? And this one's a sick one. This next feature is arguably my favorite. Come in here with Donny. I don't think I need to explain this reference. Anyone nerdy enough to be watching this video, I'm sure we'll put it together. It's a fantastic nod. It also makes for a fantastic feature. They're feeling threatened. Danny gets the alert. Uh-oh, time to go. Pull down this basketball hoop. Boom, lockdown. And then it goes one step further. If you look here, you've got that red button and you've got that little panel to pan pan. Let me pull out, let's see if this works first time. It did, it did work first time. I don't know if you caught that rapid fire extreme action, but this barrel just came smashing out and smashed this Uruk foot face dude. Into oblivious smash bro. Next room along we got Danny to splinter. Heading through into this kind of, this room doesn't seem to have any kind of specified play feature purpose, but I almost like that because it lets you, you know, put some of it on yourself. You can decide what that is. Or, you know, it's just a hallway because it's a big ass joint. We're back with Mikey. Woo! Dead! Because he's going to show us off the first biggest feature of the bottom floor the skateboard ramp. Right, if you feel like that ramp's a little intrusive, what's cool, it can actually swivel and move to different spots. So you can make a bigger play area footprint if you want to. Right, we got the mandatory lower level ooze pouring decal cesspool pits. It wouldn't be a turtle play set without some flow and sewery stickerage. Oh, it always looks so good. Nostalgia. It makes me feel like I'm looking at Master of the Universe box art or something. Here we have this red dome of dome. It's just another pipe. In this incarnation, it doesn't really quite go anywhere, but there was a Toy Fair or Comic Con or something. Anyway, there's a playset that joins to the bottom of this. So it can get even taller, if you can believe it. Here we have Raphael's workout room. You can see him in there, getting swole, doing some reps. The feature here is that he can explode out if you like press on this tab at the back. I'm wondering if someone big enough fell down the trap door. It did. It did. It burst him out. Arrgh. Let go of my arm, Leo. I'll show it again from when I get around to the back, but it's on this mounting so it can slide through and fire this missile that looks like a fly, which I... I imagine if I'd seen more of the show, it might make more sense, but... Alright, the last feature we have from the front is Leonardo's rotating weapons rack. But what is... that just looks like some kind of armoured pylon. Nope. Oh yeah, Leo's been holding out. So there you go, hidden weapon stash if things get dire. So like I was saying before, this playset's done a much better job than most in trying at least to add an element of 360 degree play to the way you interact with this one. And I think they've done a pretty good job, let's have a look. So it's kind of cool. They've worked in like the shadowed silhouette, so I guess you could pose out some of your baddies on the back to match those shadows, that's pretty dynamic. There's one for the origami soldier. So this area, because of how it interacts with the backdrop dioramary bit, also gets a little bit of 360. It had that extra pillar there for when people slide down. Switch over here, this ladder can be clipped up here. 
and then drop down for speedy access all the way down to the ground. The back of the vault door, so this is where the skateboards were kept. I like to skateboard! And this is where you also can get, you know, slide access. This is where we were before with that trap door operated over here. Ooh. That's why he's the leader in blue, I guess. Or will be one day. We come over here. We've got access to the arcade. So it can be over this side that they're playing. If you want to make it like they've got another room. We've got access to roll the bomb on people. I hung on this time. Right behind the ladder, we've got access to get into these bottom floors. Cool is even though it's the back, these pipes are just for support and reinforce, but they make it like more immersive than it, you know, needed to be. So that's another, so another real nod in their favor because it just adds to the playability and what you can do with it and stuff. So here's that gun. So you can have it back. Let's see someone out there. Don't worry, bros. Push it through and open that. And then finally we're back to the weights room, which almost works better as like, you know, some quiet time private space from this side. Now, I don't totally agree with this basketball ring. Swing down, now I'm on the bottom of the dip. I feel like it throws off your view of the street. It doesn't really give it a good sense of depth. Maybe if this backboard had a beam like some kind of barricade or signage that they turned into a basketball ring. You know what, some of these features I never actually found and some of them I think are double billing. Like Donnie's backpack rack? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? I think Donnie's backpack rack may have been a feature they lost some point in development because can you see here this sort of bracket? That looks like it has something that attaches to it. If you look at the actual area, there is no bracket and there's this little piece of garden wall. So I think that's a feature we may have lost and they forgot to take off of the box. Oops! There's a lot of sculpting and details and things that they really didn't have to do. It feels so, it just feels so immersive, so well-rounded. Like even down here, there's so many places that work as little independent areas. There's a lot of things pipe work and such that's not painted but there's so much sculpted detail and parts that are important have some painted detail there's elements that follow through different levels you know to give it a sense of flow and continuity there's some cool molded stuff there's a lot of stickers to fill out some of the bigger blanket areas and what's cool even this main center focus piece has some kind of like you know ink wash to give it a more weathered look would have been kind of cool to see that through the whole thing, but, you know, I think they've done a really good job. The whole art style and aesthetic of it, to me, even though I know it's New York, with like the lanterns and all the street signage and flags and awesome graffiti and stuff, kind of gives me a Hong Kong sort of vibe, which when you mix with, you know, the other real New york -y elements, like this industrial stuff and old school arch brickwork kind of gives the whole thing a little bit of a blade runnery sort of vibe to me i don't know am i crazy i don't i don't think so but that's you know that's the feels i get from it now for comparison with the 2012 nick turtles playset for some scale i know a lot of people have got this one this is an awesome playset as well the street levels are so close to matching um next to the 2012 it's a lot more, it's a lot more 90s. It's a lot more sort of fresh prints. This is a little more Independence Day. Some cool features across both. Where you really notice it is with the green. You know, this one has a much more pop neon aesthetic than the gritty daredevil-y tones that this one was kind of getting out there. What how makes a playset particularly cool to me is when you can use it not just with that property, that it is for, you know what I mean? Like, 
I think with the last couple of like Spider-Man playsets that came out for the last movie, I think that they were way too Spider-branded. They had like webs and Spider-Man's face on the wall and stuff like that. I don't really want that. I want playsets that if I decide to, it'll work just as well with different franchises. For massive diorama possibilities. I think it also works just as well to help a couple of Spider-Men escape some of their worst foes to date. We will eat you, Spider. Oh, <laughs> we were off the menu. For me, this is what playsets are all about. Not being limited to just that first franchise. This is giving me hard 90s nostalgia vibes. This is awesome. I might actually kit this whole deck out to look like it's from the Spider-Man cartoon. Or it'd probably work just as well as some Morlock tunnels where mutants are having to hide from a world that hates and fears them just for being alive. It's me, Peter Parker, just minding my own business. What?